Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Hip Rock Tier Studio. Today I am here sharing with you a project that I made for the Stencil Girl creative team. The challenge for January was to either frame it or to fill it with circle shapes. And those were our options. I decided to do both because why not? <laughs> I wanted to play with dark and light and the idea of tones ranging from white to black with all the grays in between and combine that idea with circle shapes, interesting shapes inside of circle shapes, inside of circle shapes, and then also contrasting that a bit with some rectangular or, or square or straight line shapes. So the first thing that I'm doing here is I have a 12 by 12 canvas and I am using black gesso and white gesso and I'm, I started with the black in one corner and I'm going across diagonally and then trying to blend it, trying to blend through grays and blend into white in the other corner. So once that was all dry, then I started to, to stencil. Um, the first stencil that I'm using is Circles, Circles by Tracy Bautista. This is one of my favorites. You can see that it is because it's completely covered with paint. <laughs> it's got so many layers of paint on it. It's so thick, but this is a great stencil. It's abstract while still giving you a shape and an idea of what it is. It just looks like she took some markers and went and made a lot of circles around circles around circles and then made that into a stencil and it's it's a great design. It's one of the first ones I got from Stencil Girl and I just still love it. Um, I use it a lot. So where the black gesso is, I'm using titanium white paint and this is the titanium white um, fluid paint from Deco Arts is called Deco Art Media Fluid Paint. And so in the black area, I stenciled with white. And in the white area, I'm stenciling with black. Same uh, type of paint, a fluid paint. And I'm using these sponge daubers that I ordered off of Amazon. There's st several different sizes in a pack and then I got a lot of packs with inside a pack. <laughs> so I have a lot of them. And when I'm done using them, I just throw them in water so that they don't get all hard and crusty. And I can just reuse them after rinsing them out. So the tricky part is what to do in the gray area. So I mixed a little bit of white and black together and I started stenciling in that gray area with a lighter gray. And then I'm gonna need to just keep kind of blending and blending until everything looks cohesive. Of course, the stencil is a nine by 12 size and the canvas is a 12 by 12. So I do have to move the stencil around and try to realign it um, in different areas. It doesn't, it doesn't overlap. It's not one of those ones that you could overlap it, but it's close enough that you can get it, um, you know, a design all over the entire canvas of these circles within circles within circles. Circle shapes are used so often in art. I see them in all kinds of art. Um, this is kind of a, an abstract piece, but they could certainly be used to create more concrete things, balloons, bubbles, all those type of things. I was just trying to more play with tone and shade than I was to worry about this looking like a specific thing. So once I had my first layer of stenciling done um, pretty well with uh, going from dark to light, then I wanted to put some other stencil shapes within side of the circles. So I have another stencil here. This one is S008 Circle 6 by Michelle Ward. And it has some almost kind of like a mandala design. It's got sort of a flowery shape in the center and then spokes coming out. It kind of reminds me of a sun image. Interesting stencil. And this is of course a small, a smaller size six by six. So I can layer that stencil over 
the other circles trying to center it as well as I can and then I can put the other stencil over the top and layer the stencils one on top of each other so that I get that that mandala design with inside the other circle of course these circles circle circles by Tracy Bautista are not perfectly perfectly circular so it does sometimes get a little bit wonky but I'm happy with that the other stencil the smaller stencil that I'm using is S709 spoked wheels collage by Jennifer Evans and I am just ran um, alternating some black paint some white paint some mixture of white and black to make a gray trying to add pattern and interest inside of all these circles and stack all these circles one on top of each other sometimes I stack the stencils so that I don't go over the edge and sometimes I don't sometimes I just take the stencil right over the top um, I do have a little bit of trouble with getting too much paint remember I'm using a fluid paint and I'm getting a little bit too much soaked into my sponge dauber thing and I am getting some blobby stenciling so perhaps I should have used a different tool or been more careful about um, blotting off you know uh, sponging it off onto my palette before I go right into the stencil but that's okay I plan to do pen work anyway so I'm not too concerned about it but you can see that there's some places where the fine detail of the stencil it got lost because I had too much paint on my sponge dauber so that's just something to keep in mind um, when you go to get more paint or re-ink your sponge just make sure that you pat it a few times across your palette in a drier area so that you can get that fluid paint off the sponge and then it won't go under the stencil as much also you could use a stencil adhesive such as pixie spray to really make the stencil lay down on the canvas very well and then you wouldn't have any bleed under or very little but I was just too too much of in a hurry <laughs> to do that so then I have these two other smaller canvases these are canvas boards and I want to play with that idea of framing um, and also maybe give the canvas a little bit of height and interest uh, just something I wanted to do so one of them was already painted black uh, with gesso and the other one was white and I used the L 071 random circles stencil by Mary Beth Shaw this is a large one to uh, stencil the background of my white one and I started in the corners with dark paint and then mixed it a little bit with white and um, gradually went towards the center from the two uh, opposite diagonal corners to um, tone this canvas and then I'm using the same process of using the spoked wheel collage and the circle six to put some pattern and interest inside of these these circles that I've stenciled on with the random circle stencil and then I want to make sure that the the edge is very dark on this one because it's going to be layered on top of the other one the larger one so I took my black paint and sponged around the edges with the dauber and made sure that all the edges of the canvas were painted black then with the smaller black one it's even smaller than the other one I stenciled with white using the circle circle one again and then went over it with circle six and I decided that I didn't really like the way the edges were on it so I ended up using some black paint to just paint all the corners after I do this pen work so this is what I'm talking about the rest of this video is pen work and also assembly um, so I've got a fine tip white Posca pen a fine tip black Posca pen a larger tip of the 
a Sharpie water-based, so that would be an acrylic pen. These are all acrylic paint pens. Um, I have the, the black in the large size of the Sharpie brand. And then I also have a chalk marker, which I can't remember the brand right now, but it's an a unusual off-brand um, white fat-tipped chalk, chalk marker. And that's what I'm going to do all my detailing with, those four markers. And make sure that you shake them well so that the paint inside is mixed up and you get the most opacity from the paint, particularly this white, the white ones, they really need to be sh shaken up, shake it, shake it, shake it, so that you get good opacity. So this is where I decided I didn't really like having all that, that stenciled stuff around the edges um, pretty soon here. It just, it looked messy and I wanted to just, just have that circular and flower shape in the center. And that's all I wanted. So I painted around the edges to get rid of that extra stenciling, over stenciling stuff around the edges and it looks a lot better. So I'm doing the same type of detail pen work to the next size up canvas using these two fine markers. And then I'm also going to do it on the 12 by 12 as well. Not not retouching every single thing that I do, every single stencil bit, just enough that it looks like I have added my own touch to the stencil work. When you're using stencils, you should use them as a tool to make marks and then go ahead and make your own marks in addition so that it becomes your, your artwork and not just the stencil designer's artwork. Of course, the way that you use the stencil in your own unique style of also makes it your art but I really think of stencils as a tool and not the end of the art just something that gets you there so adding your own marks with um, acrylic markers or something else whatever you do does make that art more yours so I'm still working on that. I decided to make this upper corner look more like this circle circle stencil. Um, it's It was actually stenciled with the random circles which are a lot more uniform, but I wanted to make it have that kind of interesting, as if you'd taken a marker and just randomly made circles around circles around circles. I, I like the look of that. So I did that with my marker on that upper corner so that it would coordinate better with my little black canvas that goes on top. And then I am I keep putting the little one on top of the other one so that I know which portions of, of the canvas that I don't have to do pen work because it's going to be covered anyway. So those two little canvases are done. I decide where I want to place it, which ends up being um, in the corner that was originally white. I draw a line around it so I know um, where it's going to be framed and I don't I have to don't have to worry about pin work underneath that spot because of course it's going to have a canvas over the top of it. so why why go crazy with it? So I start working my pins around that area there was there was some kind of um, blotchy stenciling down there that I needed to touch up a little bit where I had got too much paint on the sponge and made it a little bit bloppy and I'm tracing around the stenciling on this uh, circle six by Michelle Ward the, the design I'm just tracing around the design on some of those so that it really stands out more especially over the gray if um, the white is stenciled over the gray it looks best if I go around it with a black line just to make it kind of stand out more from the background and like I said before I don't do every single one I don't go around every single thing I want some of them to look more like they're in the background and some of them to look like they're in the foreground so doing the pen work brings them to the foreground and that's what I wanted to do. Here's where I bring in the larger tip of the black, which is the Sharpie water-based marker. It's much larger, fatter 
uh, pin than the small fine tips that I have from Posca. I love all types of acrylic markers. They are my favorite. I decided to use that to make the frame around the canvas that I'm going to put on there a little bit wider. So I did that and then I decided, oh, what I need to do is go around the edges of the canvas because I want to paint all the canvas edges black, I decided. So I want to make sure that there's a, a definite line and this is part of my framing idea of framing things inside of things inside of things and making boxes around things that that's pleasing to me that type of look is makes me happy to have things contained inside of lines i probably am more of an illustrator brain than i am <laughs> um good at doing abstract things. I, I really like having lines around things. And so being able to frame in these circles within these rectangles, I think is very, very interesting and fun to look at. So I'm continuing to touch up um, and redefine lines and make more marks with my pins. I don't show you every single second of it. Um, this canvas project took me about three hours to complete so there's no way that I could condense three hours into <laughs> 20 minutes of video even with the speeding so you're not going to see me make every single mark but just just you know just so you know that I did make marks all over this thing uh, to make it more my art drawing around things making dots making um, I don't know, just marks. I did also, I guess I forgot about this one. I got out a medium tip gray Posca pin that came in a set of medium tips as well, just to use that a little bit because we are supposed to be going from dark to light and light to dark and there's so many shades of gray in between. So I did use a gray marker too. I forgot about that one, sorry. So, I'm having fun doing this. This uh, this type of mark making is relaxing to me. I don't feel like I have to draw a thing. I'm just making dots and circles and lines. And um, it's something that I can just sit, I could sit and do it for hours. It's kind of like zentangling, except for I'm not having to draw my own shapes. The, sh the Zentangle shapes actually stress me out a little bit <laughs> because I'm not sure what I'm doing. So I decided I wanted a second frame around my framed area because it didn't quite stand out as much as I had hoped since it's all the same colors. So I used that fat marker and draw a frame around the other lines. And then I used the fine tip white and go and make kind of like a beveled edge on the inside of that frame with the white. And that looks better. Now you can really see it coming out from the background and standing out. So to attach my canvases, I use this, um, it's carpet tape that you can buy at a home store, but it's, it's foam and it has sticky on e either side. So I cut it to, sh to shape and then before I put it on there, I make sure that I take that marker and make all the white tape edges go away so that when you see it from an angle, you don't see a bunch of white underneath. I think that looks better since all the edges of the little canvases are black. And then I do the same thing with the other one and then attach it onto my larger 12 by 12 canvas. And then I do... Um, the last thing I do is just a little bit of splattering with some black and then some white paint. Um, just I just think splatters are interesting and they're so random, you can't control them. So I did that a little bit around just to finish up my piece. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Remember these are all Stencil Girl stencil products um, and I'm doing this for their creative team. I am enjoying this a lot. Make sure you give it a thumbs up leave a comment or question below. Subscribe if you haven't already and turn on your notification bells. And of course, you can share this on Pinterest or on Facebook if you'd like to. That helps our channels grow by having 
videos shared and liked and commented on. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.